In the last segment, we saw an introduction to this lecture sequence. In this segment, we are going to study the set and the pair classes or data structures from the standard library. So I am going to introduce the set class through an example, through a program. So first of all, uh, when we write a program, we will need the usual things like include simple CPP, but if we want to use the set class, we should also have hash include set. Then we will have the main program and in the main program, I can define a set as shown here. So this is saying that I want a set of integers, I want a variable called students which is going to be representing, which is going to be containing a set of integers. And I am not restricted to a set of integers, I might want a set of uh, strings for example. So here I am thinking of representing the uh, students using their roll numbers. If I wanted to represent them using their names, then a set of strings would be the right, uh, the right class for me to create, uh, the right variable for me to create. Now let me just go ahead with the program. So this program is going to read a bunch of student roll numbers. So a loop which uh, goes while true, there is no exit at the top. But what we are going to do is we are going to read in a roll number. Okay? So the variable roll number is going to be read from the keyboard and we are going to have this convention that if the roll number that, that is read in is smaller than 0, then that is going to be a signal that all the roll numbers have been typed in. So in that case we are going to break. Otherwise, what we typed in is a valid roll number and we just want to insert it into our student set. So that is accomplished by the statement students.insert of roll number. So into a set what we have seen here is that you can insert something and since this is a set of integers, you can insert an integer. Now we have inserted all the roll numbers into our set called students. What can you do with this next? So here I am going to read in one more roll number. So let me call it S. So I read into S from the keyboard. Now I can check whether this roll number is present in my student set. How do I do this? So for this we have this function, we have this member function called count. So students that students dot count of S is going to return the number of times S appears in the set students. So if S was typed, then this would evaluate to a 1. Okay? So uh, if S is not present, then this would appear, appear 0 times. So, so you really should think of count uh, as taking the value 1 or 0, but so yeah, so that is it. Okay? This is the set and so really no element can appear more than once here. Then we are going to do something interesting. We are going to print out all the elements of the set. And this is really very similar to what we did for maps. Okay? So over there we iterated. Okay? So we iterated over this set and now this R is going to be each element of this set. Okay? So we are going over all the elements in the set students and we are going to refer to each element using this variable r. Okay? So I can iterate over sets, okay? so that is one of the operations that I can do in, with a set and given that operation, okay, what can I do with r? Well, each element is a roll number and I can print out that roll number directly. Okay? Now there is some interesting point over here, so this set implicitly is an ordered set. So when I go over the set elements, okay, when I iterate over the set elements, okay, I am going to encounter the elements in increasing order. Okay? So, so this less than order should be defined on this data type and indeed less than is defined on this data type and in fact I am going to get in increasing order. Okay. If I had had a set of strings, then I would have got them in 
lexicographic order. Okay? So, so this, is, this is something nice. So I will now be able to print all the set elements, but they will be in increasing order or lexicographic order, whatever is consistent with the less than order which must be defined on this data type int. Okay? So that is it. So that is it for this program. And in addition, the set class or the set data structure has many other operations defined. Okay, so for example, you can remove an element after inserting it into a set. And this is done by the member function erase, but that is not the only function. There are other functions also available. And there are various online documentations. So just do a search on the, on the net and you will get all the other operations which are available. Okay? So we are not going to we are not going to rely on all those operations. I mean this is just a this is just a very simple minded introduction to this class. And so for understanding for answering the questions in the exam as well as answering the questions in the quiz, whatever we have discussed over here is going to be adequate. Okay? Let me just point out that there is something also called unordered set. Okay? So in this uh, th there is no order. So if I if I am going to iterate over them, I will get the elements in some order which you cannot really make any sense of. So if there are numbers, maybe the numbers will come out increasing, but maybe they will not, they will come in some random order. Okay? But this set turns out to be faster. Uh, it is a little trickier and I am not going to talk more about it. And some of the features that we have talked mentioned over here like this iteration order uh, is not uh, available. If you if you create a set of uh, if you create an unordered set, okay. So I'm just going to give you a demonstration of uh, sets. So let us go to that. Okay. So you can see this is the same program which you had seen earlier on the slides. So let me compile it. Okay. Okay. So I have compiled it. Now I'm going to run it. And now as I run it. Okay, the first thing if you remember, I have to insert students into that set and I have to end by printing, by giving in some negative quantity. So maybe I will put 59 as the first roll number. This is the first student that enters. Okay, so let me just move this so that it is clearly visible. Okay, then maybe 45 enters, then maybe 66 enters, 23 enters. Okay. And then maybe that is the end and so I will give minus 1. Okay? So at this point the program knows that uh, all the students that were supposed to enter have been have entered. Okay? Now what was the student doing? What was the program doing? Well the program is now expecting me to type in a roll number and it is going to tell me whether that roll number is present in that set or not. Okay? So let us say I type 66. So what? let us see what happened. So when I typed 66, the first thing it typed, if you remember, was whether or not, what is the count of 66 in this, in this set. So in fact, the count of 66 is 1 because 66 is present over here. Okay? And after that, it printed all the roll numbers in the set in increasing order. So this is the increasing order over here, 23, 45, 59, 66. We did not type them in that order. but it prints them out in increasing order. Okay? All right, so let us go back to uh, the slides and let us move on to pairs. Okay? The general form of how you declare a pair is this. So you say pair, then you name a type and another type and then you name the variable, give the name of the variable that you are trying to create. Okay? So what does this do? Well, it creates a struct okay? and it, the struct only has two elements. The first element which is actually called the, the data member is called first has, ty has to have type T1 and the second has to have type T2. Okay? So, so you can think of this as being a struct which is predefined for you. If you just, you do not have to actually say struct and then give members and all of that. Okay? This struct is sort of predefined because of this statement over here. Okay? So here is an example. I might say pair int string p1, p2. So this creates two variables p1 and p2. 
okay, of type pair of int string. So, P1 has an int part and a string part and P2 also has an int part and a string part. Okay. And in fact, to get to the int part of uh, either, I have to use the member first or I, so I have to say P1 dot first or P1 dot set to get to the string part. Now there is a nice feature, I have this constructor also available. Okay. So again this is all predefined. So here I, am, I have to type the initial value of the integer that I want to create and the initial value of the string that I want to create. So what would this do? This would create a struct P1 whose first part is 50 and second part is 50 but in words. Okay. Alternately I can do this as well, I can initialize P2 dot first equal to 60 and I can initialize P2 dot second equal to, to 60 as well. So the string part would be set to this 60. Okay. And finally there is an, a very interesting convenience provided. I can compare pairs. Okay. So I can write something like P1 less than P2. So what does this do? So this is going to be less than if the first part of P1 is less than the first part of P2. If they are both equal then it is going to go to the second part. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen in this case? So over here the first part of P1 is 50 and the first part of P2 is 60. So this comparison is going to come out true. So this will cause a 1 to be printed okay, or a true to be printed. Okay. So yeah, so the comparison happens according to the, to the lexicographic sorting order. All right, so what have we discussed in this segment? So we have discussed the standard library class set okay, and in addition to the operations that I showed you, there are many other operations available. Okay. It also allows iterators okay, and we also discussed or rather we just mentioned the standard library class unordered set. Then we discussed the standard library class pair. Now pair is something that is meant to be used for quick programming okay, rather than having to take the trouble of creating a struct. So defining a struct then using it, you can just sort of create the struct on the fly. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so that is what uh, pair is meant to be for. Okay. And by the way, pairs are used in maps. So if you remember a map itself has two parts, a key type, a key part and the value part. Okay. So actually maps are indeed sequences or ordered sequences of key type value type. So ordered according to key type. Okay. And in fact you have seen this when we printed the contents of a map in the last lecture. Remember lecture in which we had a map from uh, names of countries to their populations. Well, so there we got things, we wrote things like country name, uh, we wrote things like uh, variable dot first and that first was the country name and variable dot second and that second was the population. Okay. So, so uh, pairs are actually used and are parts of maps. C++ also allows you to define a similar class called tuple. Oh, by the way, here is one quick use that you might put pairs to. If you want to return two objects, then you can just return it as a pair and you can receive it as a pair uh, in your calling program as well. Okay? So, um, so, pair, so rather than having to define a proper struct, this is sort of a quick way of doing things. And of course, the fact that pairs are lexicographically ordered okay, is also very helpful. The standard library also has other interesting classes. Uh, something called priority queue is quite interesting, but we are not going to look at those in, in, this, uh, in this course. In the next segment, we are going to talk a little bit about how these data structures are going to be implemented. But before that, let us take a break.